So let's talk about symbolics. So in MathCAD, we have two math engines. We have a numerics engine and we have a symbolics engine. The numerics engine lets us solve things numerically. Okay, so we can calculate things numerically, which is what we do most of the time, but we can also evaluate things symbolically in MathCAD. So here on the math tab, if we go to the center and go just to the right of that, we see a button called Symbolics. And this is where we get all of the symbolic functionality. So there are a couple of different sections in this panel. And the one that we're going to talk about first is this very top section under Operators. And specifically, we're going to talk about this arrow that points to the right. So that arrow is how we request a symbolic solution as opposed to a numerical solution. So if we want an answer in terms of variables instead of numbers, we're going to use this arrow. And we're going to use this arrow anytime we want to invoke any of these keywords or these modifiers okay, that also come with the symbolics engine. So symbolically, we can do a lot of things. We can, we can solve all sorts of algebraic expressions and problems, we can factor, we can collect like terms, we can combine variables, we can do all of those things. We can also take Laplace transforms, okay, which can only be done symbolically, uh, and inverse trans Laplace transforms as well. And we can substitute variables into expressions. So this, this is very uh, robust. And we don't have time to go into all of this, but we can do a couple of quick things, okay? So I'm just gonna list out a few things that we can do symbolically that we'll run through. So the first is just calculating symbolically, okay? So we'll do calculating symbolically. So in order to do that, let's take this definite integral here. So we're gonna put in this definite integral and we'll just say we wanna integrate the sine of x times the cosine of x, the x, and for the limits, we're gonna put a and b, okay? So rather than numerical limits, we're gonna use symbolic limits and uh, variable limits, and we're gonna click on the symbolic arrow here, and we're gonna get a symbolic solution. So now we know exactly how that integral is calculated. So that's the symbolic calculation. Now, what we can do is we can assign that symbolic solution to a function, okay? So maybe we're calculating the volume um, across a cross-sectional area. So we're gonna say calculate B, that's the name of our function, and our limits are A and B, so those are the variables. And now we've created a function that stores the symbolic solution. So then, after that, we can actually evaluate that function for given inputs, numeric inputs for A and B. So if our lower limit is 4.5 for A and the upper limit is 9.2, and ideally we would have units here, we're gonna get an answer, okay? So, so that's how the symbolics engine works. So we can evaluate things symbolically using that symbolic arrow, and we can assign the symbolic solution to a function. So let's take a look at another symbolic capability. So we're gonna do the solve keyword this time. Okay, so if we go to the symbolics panel, the keyword we're gonna apply is this one, solve. And we're just gonna write an expression, okay, an expression that I think everybody probably knows. We're gonna say P1 times V1, this is a balanced equation, okay? So we're gonna write a balanced equation equals P2 times V2. And we can ask MathPad to solve for any variable within a balanced equation symbolically, okay? And this is a simple one, we just have four variables, but these balanced equations can be quite complex. So we're going to say let's solve so we're going to apply the symbolic arrow and then we're going to apply that modify or that keyword solve and then we're going to say let's solve for v2 and so then mathcad will rearrange that balanced equation 
and solve for V2. So then let's, let's assign that symbolic solution to a function, just like we did last time. Okay, so we're gonna assign it to a function and maybe the function is called find V2 and that's gonna be a function of P1, V1, and P2. Okay, so now we've solved symbolically, we've assigned the symbolic solution to a function, and now we can call that function for numeric inputs for pressure and volume. So we can actually define some input variables. So we'll say P init is 500 PSI, and then let's say V init, so our initial volume is 300 mLs. And then P final, maybe that's 770 uh, PSI. So now let's call our function find V2. And for P1, we're going to give it our initial pressure. So our initial pressure. And then for V1, we'll give it our initial volume. And then for P2, we'll give it our final volume. There it is, and then we can type equals, and then we have our final, our final volume. And let's convert that to milliliters. And then, of course, we want to assign that to a variable called uh, p subscript final. So that is how the solve keyword works symbolically. So let's go to the next one substitute. Okay, so to do substitution, we're going to use the explicit keyword, okay? We'll stick with our same example here. So we're simply going to type find v2, that's our function. So we're going to give it the same function call, okay? And this time, I'll actually click on the arrow so that we can see it. So there's the arrow, and I'm going to type explicit in here, okay? So that explicit keyword is this one down here. And that lets us substitute variables into the math before we see the answer. So I'm going to say explicit and then a comma and say all. So we're going to explicitly substitute all of our inputs. Initial pressure, initial volume, final pressure, and there we can see the number substituted in. And then we can tag on a regular equal sign after that. So that's how we substitute variables. That's the variable substitution. We use the explicit keyword. And then last, let's do a quick Laplace transform. So the Laplace transform will take us from the time domain to the S domain. So if we have a function f of t, and that's t squared, and then we multiply that, let's say by t squared times e to the t power, t squared times e to the t, we can take the Laplace transform of that by going to the symbolics and clicking on the keyword Laplace. So here it is. And then we can just hit enter, and that's going to give us the S domain representation of that function. And then we can assign that to a function f of s. Okay, and then the inverse Laplace works the same way. And finally, we have the float keyword. So that's probably the last one that we'll look at today. So the float keyword will let us see more decimal points of floating point precision in our answers than what we can get out of the numeric engine. So if we look at pi and we type pi equals, that's using the numeric engine. And we can go up to math formatting, and here we can see that we can display up to 15 decimal points of floating point precision on the number pi. But if we use the symbolic engine, then we can use a lot more. So we'll go over here, and we'll go to symbolics, and we'll apply the float keyword here. So here's the float keyword, and maybe we want to see 30 decimal points of floating point precision on pi. And so there it is. Okay, so that's the float keyword. So you can, you can use the float keyword to specify exactly how many decimal points of floating point precision you want to see. And so, uh, so that can be quite useful as well. So those are just some of the highlights on the Symbolics Engine app.